in certain circumstances, but it's not for everybody. But it does allow that second or third or fourth generation foreign abroad to apply to the Minister for Citizenship if uh, the denial or the lack of Canadian citizenship means that they're stateless. But there are restrictions, uh, age uh, and not re yeah, residencies uh, and criminality uh, restrictions on access to citizenship uh, in that circumstance. So this is a problem I hope we can get into these kinds of details later. Um, the minister also has under the Citizenship Act, Section 5, Sub 4 of that act, discretionary power to grant citizenship to individuals uh, to make an application where they can establish that there are special and unusual hardships associated uh, with their situation. So one would think that statelessness would constitute one of those unusual hardships. Um, this is a provision that has not been sufficiently tested yet. Uh, I do uh, very much not wearing a UNHCR hat, but I do think that the absence of a, of a direct and explicit reference to statelessness in that context is something that uh, needs to be reformed. There was uh, an interesting case recently called Bukokoti, and uh, I don't know, but maybe, maybe one of the council that was on that case is here, I'm not sure. But uh, it's 2015 SCA 139 for those who uh, are lawyers and into case law. Uh, it was an interesting case that kind of dealt with uh, the, the circumstance of, of who gets use of solely citizenship. In this case, uh, it concerned a pair of Indian nationals who were working at the Indian embassy uh, here in Ottawa, I think, uh, and the Citizenship Act generally applies or allows use of solely citizenship to anybody who's born in Canada, but it doesn't apply to citizens of diplomats or people who are, you know, working here in a diplomatic capacity for the UN. In this case, uh, there was a big question about these, these two Indian nationals who I think were working as cleaners, uh, so they were not themselves diplomats, but they were working at the embassy. Uh, they had a child. There's a bit of a question about whether they were still on their employment contract at the moment of birth or not. It's a sort of a live question. Well, I, I think it's a live question, in fact, that hasn't been fully resolved yet. But because you know the, the original decision maker in the federal court determined that the, the two cleaners were still formally employed, this child did not have Canadian citizenship. Uh, and it became a problem because when the child uh, got into his 20s, he got into some trouble uh, with the law and ended up being found inadmissible for criminality and a deportation was ordered, uh, order was issued against this child who thought he was a Canadian, he was born in Canada like, like me. Uh, but, but for this odd little circumstance, he was determined uh, to be a non-Canadian. Ultimately, um, the court didn't resolve the question finally. So there was a very interesting challenge to the denial of citizenship that went up to the Court of Appeal. There was an assertion by counsel and by, by Mr. Bukhari that he had a right under the charter to be recognized as a citizen. And he asked the court to declare that he was a Canadian citizen under Section 6 and 7 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The court declined. Um, I don't think that it's finally disposed of, though, because the court declined in this case because the court believed that there might still be access to Indian citizenship uh, for this individual, and maybe also the Section 5.4 uh, Citizenship Act provision. So just an interesting side thing. There is some interesting litigation happening in this world right now. Uh, under the Citizenship Act, there are two ways that someone can lose their Canadian citizenship. One is renunciation, and the other is revocation. They are what they sound like. Uh, renunciation means that the citizen is saying, I don't want to be a citizen anymore. Uh, and there's a process that need, they need to go through in order to be, uh, to have their citizenship removed, uh, including establishing that they won't render themselves stateless in that circumstance. And the second is revocation. Uh, revocation is a problem uh, from a human rights perspective and a statelessness perspective, particularly. Uh, because it allows the minister to apply to the court to revoke Canadian citizenship uh, where there's been fraud, misrepresentation, or knowing concealment of material facts in the application for citizenship. 
But since last year, there's an additional ground on which citizenship can be revoked, and that is uh, crimes, uh, so-called, not necessarily, but convictions related to national security. 